Tyson and Drew DeArmond. Call into the Neighbors Wealth Management Hotline now, 256-576-4977. That's 256-576-4977. Now, here's Scott and Drew. And we are off. We're running. We're back. We're live. It is another brand new edition of Talking Ball, 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Scott Tyson, Drew DeArmond, welcome in on a Tuesday morning. Safe travels into work, into school, wherever you may be headed this morning. 64 degrees as you get your day started here in the Tennessee Valley. 256-576-4977. That's the number to the Neighbors Wealth Management Hotline. You can join us throughout the two-hour extravaganza. A lot to get through this morning. College football transfer portal window is open. What does it mean? Some basketball news and notes. Salary pools escalating in college football. Who are the two highest paid staffs in America? We'll break that down. Uh, But what a night it was last night inside uh, the Von Braun Center's North Hall. Saturn Hall, I think, is what they call it now. I I forget. I mean, it's always been North Hall to me, and it always will still be the the North Hall, but they've got a name for it now. Uh, But what a class it was for the Huntsville-Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame class. Ron Alexander, Andy Blackston, Greg Brown, Annette Fletcher, Ruthie Hambrick, Kathy Huff, Jay Shear, Angie Stafford, Bronski Towns, Kenneth Darby, Ramsey Robinson, Clifford Toney, and Bobby Pierce, the Special Achievement Award. I mean, when Bobby Pierce is getting the special achievement, yeah. uh, I mean, it's a heck of a class. Heck of a night last night. Over 800 people wow. on hand for the induction ceremony. So, huge and, crowd. Uh, packed. Uh, yeah. Uh, my, it was, uh, as always, though, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to MC that thing. To look uh, like James Bond for a day and MC it. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, modern brides. There you go. Had to go to a a bride shop to get fitted for a tux. That was an experience into itself. Uh, But (laughs) anyway, uh, great night. Wow. And and for the next, what, three or four days. We got good content coming. Yes. We're going to have some of the inductees join us. Right. uh, Via the phone, via Mm -hmm. in studio. So it's going to be a fun one. But, man, (coughs) what a class. What a night, though, just to see familiar faces in the crowd and visit with people that you haven't seen in a long time. Oh, I, it, it's, 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 it's always a great night. I've uh, been part of those evenings before and watching folks get inducted and it's awesome. And there was a, that was a star studded class last night, man. And uh, a lot of guys and, and, and ladies and student athletes that uh, had, I had a chance to watch compete. And uh, you know, the thing is though, you start, Feeling the gray hairs because I believe (laughs) I've been told that part of the uh, prerequisite for being inducted is you have to be over 40 years old. You do. And so that means these these folks are, you know, well past their prep and college days and uh, coming back to get inducted. But it's always great. Uh, And as you said, Scott, we're going to be catching up with a lot of these folks this week and getting a chance to have some great conversations, including today. Uh, with someone uh, that's got three Super Bowl rings. Yeah, Ramsey Robinson. Um, he yeah. told me now he's going back. I said, "Hey, do you have time to join <laughs> us this week?" Yeah, and he said he's very busy. I know. He said, "Well, it would have to be tomorrow right. because they start off season See? training that's what tomorrow." I'm yeah, because then the, then the, and then the draft next week. Yes. So I'm like, "Are we there? Are we at that point already?" Right. Uh, it is. It, everything is flying by. So. I said, he goes, I said, what time are you leaving? He said, I'm leaving at 10 a.m. I said, 10 a.m. flying, yeah. Yes, can we get you at 7.30? He's like, yes, that'll work, that'll work. Okay. So hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was good. Uh, Andy Blackston, it, it was good to see Andy Blackston back uh, in the Tennessee Valley, former Madison Academy head coach. And uh, he was, I'm just going to share some of the stuff. But he was joking uh, with our good friend, Um uh, Lee head basketball coach. Yeah, Greg Brown. Greg Brown. He was joking with him that when uh, when Andy was coaching at Madison Academy, that was one coach that he was not able to beat oh. was Greg Brown. 
That's he said they didn't nugget. play a bunch. They yeah, didn't meet yeah. each other right, a lot. Right, right, right. He goes, but those were some really good M8 teams, some really good lead teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one team that Andy Blackston could not get by was the Lee Generals. Well, I mean, was... they've won a combined eight state championships. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. two coaches. Yes. Uh, we're saying, yeah. Yes. And That's then, why they were elected, by the way. And yeah. then, you know, Kenneth Darby uh, – to, to hear his accomplishments. Right. And he and Ramsey at Butler mm -hmm. at the same time was was great. Uh, Jay Shear, a lot of members of that state uh, Nearly the whole squad, team. man. I saw I saw the photo. I mean, that, that was he, neat. You know? he, said, uh, he said that when, when, when they came out and everybody was coming, uh, they had a joke uh, that the guards were at one table and the bigs were at another. Um, so yeah. it, it was good. It was a good night, and uh, congratulations to everybody that was inducted last night into the Huntsville Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame. Another great class, and hey, they did say if you know of somebody that yeah. needs to be inducted, they they do their best yes. to find a lot of these, but they can't find everybody. So if there's a nominee that you need or you want to be inducted, they have to be nominated. So head over to their website, mm -hmm. uh, nominate somebody. Uh, we were talking last night about some of the names that are on the horizon coming in that have not been inducted yet, especially on the baseball side. Uh, you know, Craig Kimbrell's name oh, yeah. will get inducted. Hunter Morris yep. uh, should be inducted should, at, at some point along mm -hmm. the way. Yep. Um, so Buddy there's a Bo's lot years. of names. Yep, there's a lot of names. A lot of names uh, that that'll be in there uh, as well. All right, two five six five seven six four nine seven seven. That's the number to the phone lines. You can join us this morning. And as we were coming home from the banquet last night, or as you were winding down doing from whatever you were doing, the clock struck midnight. And once it struck midnight. The transfer portal window for college football was officially open. And the mad rush to get into the portal was uh, as expected. Uh, there's not going to be like that overwhelmingly number in the portal. There were 2,618 guys in the portal coming out of the fall. Uh, 645 guys transferred last spring. So that's the feeling around these numbers. Good news is last night at midnight, this is where college coaches are going to have that nervous feeling. No one from Alabama, no one from Auburn at this moment entered the transfer portal. And that is good news because your good friend, our good friend, Ryan Fowler, uh, reporting that Ty Simpson is not expected to go into the transfer portal. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not shocked by that. I mean, I thought he might transfer uh, when the f coaching change first happened, but uh, ever since the uh, new coaches uh, have uh, come to town, I think he's really uh, he, just I, I think been a good fit for their system. I think he and his father Jason Simpson, who's the the head coach at UT Martin, I think they both liked what they heard from the coaching staff and that they thought Ty was going to get a legit shot to compete. And again, uh, sometimes the grass is not always greener on the other side. He's put in a lot of time at Alabama. This is his third year because he'll be going into his red shirt sophomore season. And, um, you know, and I thought he had a good spring. So I definitely think he's without a doubt, the number two guy. And I think he's got a chance to compete. And if he doesn't transfer to me, I think that's a positive sign that he he and his father, father and his family believe that because, you know, there's still a dearth of quarterbacks out there. He could still get a, you know, a substantial offer to go somewhere else and compete and or start. But you might go somewhere where um, it's not the greatest situation as far as talent around you, uh, you know, or again, maybe you might get somewhere and it ain't what you thought. So, yeah. I mean, and I think uh, – uh, no disrespect to the the great folks in the, in your uh, you know native state, but obviously I guess Caden Proctor felt that way because he did an exit stage left and turned around and came back. Because Iowa develops offensive linemen, but I guess he he must have seen that the punter outgained the offense by a thousand yards, and it may have scared him a little bit. Even though, and they did make a coordinator change at Iowa, but we really don't know they did, and if I'm it's not going to be a too much with I, you that. know it may just be cosmetic I mean, there may not be a whole lot different we don't know yet 
Uh, Jacoby Matthews started 12 games over two seasons at Texas A&M, a safety. He is in the transfer portal, and not because of the name, but the position yeah. is big because they do expect um, – Linemen, defensive backs, and running backs to be the needs of most teams going in, coming out of spring. That is where a lot of teams are going to concentrate on picking up players. The quarterback market is not expected to be very huge in the transfer portal window this time around because a lot of guys, a lot of teams already got their quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, they went through spring. Most of them already have a quarterback battle, either one or pretty much close to being decided. So the quarterback battle is not expected to be, or I should say the quarterback window is not expected to be real plentiful this time around. Uh, 256-576-4977 if you want to join us uh, on the program this morning. Uh, let's stay with the transfer portal window, but this time on the college basketball side, uh, Alabama did see a young guy. Go into the portal. Yeah, I'll be number four, uh, but that's just the, the climate we live in. Sam Walters, uh, you know, from the villages in, uh, in the state of Florida, the villages school, uh, he averaged nearly six points per game, had some bright moments this year, no doubt about it. Uh, it's, I, I thought had a chance to be a good player and continue to develop, but uh, has decided to enter the transfer portal. Um, uh, certainly I think he, he has a chance to have a nice career if he can uh, be, be a system fit. I think he was at Alabama, but certainly – uh, he's going to try to find a fit elsewhere. I think his biggest issues are he needs to get bigger and stronger and kind of bury his game a little bit in his toolbox. He's got to get a little bit better off the bounce and be able to post a little bit. It'll be interesting to see. I know he grew up a Florida fan. Uh, you know, I, he, he admitted that during his year at Alabama. He spent a lot of time in Gainesville as a youth, but – uh, the Gators have already been taking a lot of transfers. It'll be interesting to see where Sam Walters finds a fit. Um, I'll just say, I, I think, you know, Rylan Griffin certainly left. We've seen Sam Walters leave. Right. Um, you know, and then Davin Cosby. I've heard Davin's been reached out to by Louisville and Pat Kelsey. He'd be a good fit for that system. But I also think, too, what was Alabama's biggest issue this year, Scott? Uh, rim protection. And defense. Yeah. Their, their defense. Uh, wasn't great, and uh, all the all the cats that you've seen leave couldn't guard a naked cheerleader. So, <laughs> just saying. I mean, you know, that, that's kind of the common theme. They can't guard, and so right, gotta and, get and better they, defensively. And, and, they, and they struggle on they struggle, you know, in perimeter defense and things of that nature. And, and Sam Walters wasn't a rim protector. Sam's got talent, though. I mean, he can definitely shoot it. He can volume score. Um, you know, especially from deep, you know, if you can get him the looks. Uh, and, and Davin Cosby had a, a few bright moments as well. I mean, that, that game against Ole Miss where he, in Oxford where he came off the bench and he hit five threes. I mean, but he's also kind of struggled with defensively uh, on the perimeter. So, it, that, that's just kind of the common theme with uh, wow. with a lot of these guys. They, they struggle defensively. And then Chris Parker, um, he, he was just a guy that I don't know. He had athleticism. He had some length, but he got he got nicked up and injured, and and then plus he was struggling shooting the basketball, and so I don't know how good a fit he was either. So that you know that's kind of the common theme where you see these guys you know moving on, and that's just it's, that's just a part of it. That's what well, the, that's what's going to happen, and and certainly with Rylan Griffin, I think Griffin was the best player by far of these guys, and he was probably their best perimeter defender. But, you know, I, he averaged nearly 12. He got tons of minutes. But I think, you know, sometimes a guy wants to go. He thinks the grass is greener on the other side. He thinks he can go somewhere and maybe, you know, vary his game a little bit or become a bigger, uh, you know, part of the offense elsewhere. Uh, maybe become a – instead of – at Alabama this year, for example, I mean, he, he was basically, a, the th you know, the third option. Uh, because Mark Sears, Grant Nelson, and but Mark Sears and Grant Nelson may move on, but right. again, there's a lot of tampering that goes on. You, you sit there, you, you can just it would be, you know oh, pussy foot around it, but, yeah. it, but yeah. it, there, there's tampering that goes on, and uh, and and a lot of times through third parties, and you know some people, his agent, and some people in his inner circle may have wanted to to move on and and maybe get closer to home. He is from Texas, and. 
and I'm sure he'll have some good opportunities. There's a lot of NIL being thrown around. So, But I'll just say this. I don't think it caught Alabama's coaching staff off guard. I think that's why they were so quick to get Chris Youngblood out of the portal from uh, South Florida. And I think they believe that Youngblood is as good a defender and as good a shooter. And so I don't. I think Alabama believes that they're going to be just fine replacing Riley Griffin. Now we'll see with these other guys. These other guys so far have been role players, really. Uh, and so, and, and maybe they, you know, can get more playing time elsewhere. But I'll just say this: the old what the, the, this has become kind of the mantra: the transfer portal taketh, but it can giveth. And yes. I, and I think that Alabama's already gotten two guards. You know, Houston Millette. Uh, and then you know this, uh, and then and then of course Chris Youngblood, and I, I I think Alabama so far has done just fine with the moves they've made with their roster. Now I don't think they're anywhere close to done. Um, you know we'll see if, if you know you're hearing that there could be some more guys coming in to visit this weekend, not confirmed yet. But uh, I and I and I will say I heard last night that Alabama. I don't know that it's as substantial as Arkansas and Kentucky, but I think they have quite a bit of NIL that they can use to try to build this roster for next year. Can uh, Arkansas is, no, oh, I will they say got a this. player coming up in oh, over an hour. We're going to talk to Tyler Thompson about the Kentucky roster because yeah. the Kentucky roster is now getting decimated and it's not by coincidence that a couple of them are ending up in Arkansas. The big man, the big man, Zomanmir Ivazic. Ivazic or something. Yes. Whatever. I just call him Big Z. That's what everybody else does. Yeah. He is headed to Arkansas from Kentucky. Yep. So, John Calipari starting to build that roster with a few guys that are that, that wore the blue and white. And it's going to continue as well because there are uh, several guys – from that Kentucky roster, several of the recruits that have already gone into the transfer portal, freshman guard DJ Wagner, yeah, he went into the portal yesterday. Uh, one, two, three, four of the 2024 Kentucky signees have already gone into the transfer portal. Now they can come out, they can still stay in Kentucky, but the belief is most of them are going to end up in Arkansas. I think at least two or three more, uh, at least the signees. We'll, yeah, we'll see of the of the roster itself, but you know it, both those uh, you know situations they they're, they're going to play themselves out. Uh, you know we're going to talk to Tyler Thompson of Kentucky Sports Radio, part of On Three Sports. Uh, she was at uh, the press conference on Sunday, which was insane. Uh, for Mark Pope, and then I think Mark Pope also did Tom Leach's radio show last night, uh, and there was a huge uh, crowd over there. So there's a lot of energy around the the program. We'll see kind of what the buzz is about Pope, and I know he's trying to keep Reed Shepard, but you know Reed could be end up being a lottery pick. That's going to be hard. I definitely think they're going to keep Travis Perry, one of those signees. He's a Kentucky kid, uh, and then you know they'll be uh, talking to folks, some of the guys that are coming back on the roster. But as you said. Most of them are very likely going to uh, move on, and several of them will end up at Arkansas. Now, I was watching some coverage of some Razorback media. Hell, if you watch them, they're getting everybody. They yeah. fix, they fix and go 36-0 and 0 and win the national championship. Now, I think they're going to be really good, but everybody, we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, I think they're going to get several good players, no doubt. Uh, Knox is another one, Kevin Knox, who his brother played for Cal at Kentucky. Wouldn't be surprised if they if he ends up, or is it Carter Knox? Hell, I'd have to look it up. But the Knox kid, um, um yeah, and, and he Carter he, Knox, Carter Knox. My bad. I believe Kevin's his brother. He's with the Knicks, but uh, you know Carter Knox. He he's he's a guy I definitely would think because of the previous relationship. You already mentioned DJ Wagner. Uh, now DJ is saying that he is going to keep all options open, but the entire Wagner family played for Calipari. I would be very surprised. Now Boogie Fland. The, the five-star point guard, now, that might be one that could go elsewhere. Um, I know Alabama was heavily involved with him, even though I'm not hearing any buzz for Alabama right now. Uh, Indiana was heavily involved. Uh, and I think his final three was Kentucky, Indiana, and Alabama. Uh, and then, but, you know, he, he, could, he could end up at Arkansas as well. But Boogie, he's going to be well, you know, he's going to be sought after by a lot of schools. So we'll see. I mean, but I, I, still, see, I still think Arkansas is going to get their share. Uh, and they're going to have a very talented roster. But, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see. Because I think some of those Kentucky guys are going to, uh, you know, have 
options. And so uh, I think maybe uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a few stay or even, uh, you know, or end up still going to UK and like, like a Travis Perry. Uh, but uh, that's going to be kind of fascinating to yeah. see who Mark Pope can retain and then who do they go out and snag yep. in year one. All right, let's get a break in 720 on a Tuesday morning, 256-576-4977. You're listening to Talking Ball on 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Three wrecks it should be just about ready to clear. Pulaski Pike and Ready section, Highway 20 and the Beltline in Decatur, and Greenbrier Parkway and Old Highway 20. Those have been in long enough. They should be about ready to go. Had concrete spilled on the road on Madison Boulevard near Slaughter Road. HPD was helping with that one. No hose, no mask. You can ask Dr. Sandman, that's Dr. Sandlin, for the medically proven benefits of the Somnodent for sleep apnea and for snoring. Dr. Sandlin. 350 care captain nick in the 72 and jeff popeye skywatch traffic center by now you know about eagle masonry and insulation and maybe you know that eagle also does landscaping and dirt work but how about after paint work shower doors shelving and mirrors all taken care of by eagle the same eagle that takes care of all your masonry insulation and landscaping needs eagle brings the same level of expertise to all these disciplines and they're ready to provide you with a free quote the website is the same insulatewithegle.com as is the phone number 256-755-1556 give them a call and see what eagle can do for you eagle saves you time eagle saves you money Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. AL cert number 21014. Are those high utility bills driving you crazy this time of year? If they are, Talon Heating and Air has the special for you. That's right. We're going to run a $49 spring checkup on your system. We're going to come out. We're going to check those heat kits, make sure that everything was working through the winter right. And then we're going to also make sure your Freon's good and make sure that you're ready for the summertime. How important is that to be done this time of year? It, it's really the most important time of the year. We can avoid safety concerns caused by wintertime use, and then we can also make sure that you're ready for the summertime. And to get ready for the summertime, you just got a call? 256-503-4490. Or you can find them online at talenthvac.com. That's Talent Heating and Air. One more time. 256-503-4490. Talent Heating and Air, let them save you money. Spring is in the air, making it a great time to make plans to visit the Lodge at Gunnersville State Park. The Lodge at Gunnersville State Park sits on a cliff overlooking beautiful Gunnersville Lake with vistas from the cliffside rooms as well as the Pinecrest Room, the Lodge's premier restaurant. And as the weather warms, enjoy the gorgeous pool that overlooks the lake as well. The park also features cabins, a beach, and a boat launch, so bring your boat to take the fun to the lake. The Lodge at Gunnersville State Park. Book your visit today. All right, welcome back. <laughs> Talking Ball 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Oh, Lord. Scott Tyson, Drew Armin. Yeah. It's funny how people, like, go after things. I yeah. mean, I credit a lot of people in the media for doing a lot of work. Someone has obtained the official... And it's the official John Calipari resignation letter to Mitch Barnhart. And it's one, two sentences, three sentences. Yeah. It says, please accept this letter as notice that I will be resigning my position as head basketball coach at the University of Kentucky. My final work day will be today, April 9th. Thank you for your support and opportunities you have provided me over the course of the last 15 years. I am committed to making this transition as smooth as possible. I wish you and the University of Kentucky continued success. Mm -hmm. Done. Done. <laughs> Done. That's just like they were against Oakland. <laughs> Done. 
had about five lottery picks or whatever the hell it is and done. done. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see how they do, how he does for, you know, Arkansas, Arkansas, you know. Oh, there you go. I mean, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, as they say. I'm not calling him trash. I'm just saying that Arkansas is super excited and energized and he's going to bring good players over there and they're relieved that uh, I think that uh, they don't have to put up with the Must Circus anymore, even though Must did a good job there. I think he had kind of run his course, and so we will see. All right, 256 uh, Coming up here at the bottom of the hour, Ramsey Robinson will join us, the director of player engagement for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. As well as an inductee last night into the Huntsville Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame, former Butler, former Alabama. And you know what's good is we're not having him on last, we're having him on first. He made a joke about being last last night because that just seems to work out very well for him. Well, I mean, he's, he's referring to the NFL, but he was drafted. Mr. And Irrelevant. He, and he got to go on a parade. And then he played <laughs> six years. So it's about opportunity. And he's gotten three Super Bowl rings. And now he's got more Super Bowl rings than most. <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, if he looks at the, all the inductees into the Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame, he, I guess he and John Stallworth are looking at each other in the face. I mean, John's about John – John's got four. I, I, I did get to catch up with yeah. Mr. Stallworth last night. Go. So, that was, that was always good to see the Steeler legend. We can ask uh, Rams there, are you, are you trying are – you, are you hoping you can out-distance out him here? All right, um, I tell you what, speaking of Ramsey, let's get a break in. He's very busy. Yes, um, he is. He's very gracious with his time, so he will join us. When we come back real fast, Ramsey Robinson joining us. You're listening to Talking Ball on 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. From the Fox 54 Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jordan Dressman. A mostly cloudy sky this afternoon, maybe an isolated shower across the Tennessee Valley, but it looks like the vast majority of us are going to be dry. Temperatures climbing into the upper 70s and lower 80s. We're going to drop into the lower 60s as we head into the overnight early into your Wednesday morning. Better opportunity for showers and thunderstorms through Wednesday afternoon. It is going to be a little bit cooler. Temperatures climbing into the mid and upper 70s. I'm Chief Meteorologist Jordan Dressman on your home for ESPN Radio, 97.7 ESPN The Zone. Picked up a new accident in Scottsboro, 72 and 79. I don't think it's an injury type. And we still got Pulaski Pike and Reddy section trying to clear. That one got updated to an injury type. Had concrete spilled on the roadway, Madison Boulevard in Slaughter. Haven't heard an update on it. With more than 30 years experience, DNL Refrigeration can save you money on those heating and air conditioning repairs. 256-652-1207. State license 0809. One Captain Nick in the North Parkway Popeye Skywatch Traffic Center. Tom Luganville here for my friends at Woody Anderson Ford. Bobby White and his team take great pride in their service department, and you can see it the moment you walk into those beautiful new service lanes. And just like a championship team, they all work together to make sure your experience is second to none, whether you drive a Ford or not. Also, check out the gold-certified pre-owned inventory at Woody Anderson Ford for great deals every day. Stop by and see them at Jordan and Sparkman or at Woody Anderson of Madison on Hughes Road or visit WoodyAndersonFord.com. Did you know that Valley Equipment Rental also specializes in day and weekend rentals to homeowners? The weekend rentals is by far the best deal that they offer. If you pick up after 2 on a Friday or anytime Saturday morning, it's not due in until Monday morning before 8 a.m. for a one-day charge. For a small fee, Valley can even haul anything they carry. Valley has extremely experienced and knowledgeable staff that can help you decide what size machine you need or what type of machine you need to get your job done like a pro. They have all the big items that the contractors need for their jobs but they also carry the small tools that can help you with your diy project more importantly valley is locally owned and operated which means when you have an issue you can get someone on it right away right here in the valley heck ask for ross roberts the owner if you like try calling one of the big box national outlets and ask for the owner that's if you can even get through the automation buy local buy valley equipment rental valley equipment rental has two locations one on the north and south parkway learn more at valleyequipmentrents.com 
Hey folks, Bob Baumhauer here. We're extremely proud that Baumhauer's Victory Grill has been serving Alabama for 43 legendary years. Our motto is legendary fun, legendary food, and we strive to make every dining experience a special one for all of our guests. Our menu features delicious, always fresh and scratch-made in-house recipes. And of course, our award-winning wings and sauces. And don't forget, our happy hour and halftime daily specials cannot be beat. Baumhauer's Victory Grill, legendary fun, legendary food. At Bryant Bank, we recognize your time is valuable and easy, secure access to your finances is essential. That's why we provide the financial tools you need to manage your money on the go and make life a bit easier. At Bryant Bank, we're here to help with instant debit cards, Apple Pay, person-to-person payments, and more. Bryant Bankers want to show you how beneficial our digital banking services can be. Learn more at bryantbank.com. Bryant Bank. Live legendary. Member FDIC. The 2024 season for your Rocket City Trash Pandas rolls on as they return home Tuesday, April 23rd for a six-game homestand like you've never seen before at Toyota Field. Not only are the Pandas taking on their cross-state rivals, the Tennessee Smokies, but this homestand marks the return of the big old ballpark fair. Get your tickets to see the Pandas and the fair now by visiting TrashPandasBaseball.com. What's happening? What's happening? All right, welcome back. Talking Ball 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Uh, what's happening is we get to speak with, and he's first. Yeah. And he's first in the morning. He's the first guest in the morning, not the last You're guest. You're not doing so the Ricky Bobby. <laughs> we're, we're breaking his trend of being last. Yeah. But no, nah, but, but when you're drafted, though, that is a big deal. It and, is. No matter you know, where you're at, I it, mean, it's a big deal. You know, it is. And when you're in the Hall of Fame, in any Hall of Fame, it's a big deal. And when you have three Super Bowl rings, it's a big deal. And uh, this next gentleman, to say that he's done a, a lot in his uh, uh, short time on this planet is, a, is an understatement. Uh, I had a chance to follow his career here uh, in the Rocket City when he was – playing for Ron Danley at Butler High School and for Jack Doss. He was a multi-sport athlete at the former Butler High School. Uh, he and, of course, his running mate, Kenneth Darby, both went to the University of Alabama, both had amazing careers uh, at the university, uh, and uh, both played for several years in the National Football League before transitioning into professional life off the field. Uh, both have done very, very well. Kenneth is still here in our community, but Ramsey has spread his wings and is now a huge part of uh, as director of player engagement with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, the three-time Super Bowl champions. And now, last night, he was inducted into the Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame. And he's been kind enough to join us before the offseason starts in earnest this week yeah. for Kansas City. And Ramsey Robinson is with us on the Neighbors Wealth Management Hotline. Ramsey, you're with Drew and Scott. Good morning, brother. Oh, man, good morning, brother. Appreciate you both uh, this morning. And, man, um even just listening to uh man just the how the journey has gone you know thus far man uh, i'm super grateful um for you all and the community man and the county and just happy to be here uh, this morning so last night you get inducted into the hall of fame how fitting was it though that you did have your teammate uh kenneth darby there to be inducted yeah. at the same time it was perfection you know because since we were uh, playing uh, with each other uh, in the little league of uh, Metro Sports uh, out off a of University Drive in Northwood Projects, man, um, we, you know, uh, met then. And then we got to middle school. I was at West Lund. He had Ed White. And, of course, um, last night there was some trash talking <laughs> that he and I had uh, sitting up in our seats, uh, just reflecting back on our middle school days of competition uh, and also just National Football League. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, it was perfection, man, because, you know, me and Kenneth have, you know, our brotherhood bond was built literally through the world of sport, uh, running track, playing basketball, playing football. And uh, there were a lot of tough moments uh, where we – either we're competing against each other or, you know, playing on the same team where we literally challenge each other to overcome the adversity, thus, you know, come out with a victory. And sometimes that victory, fellas, you know, may not have been the win, 
you know, when it came to the clock, that victory was uh, he and I, you know, growing stronger and closer together and trusting each other, man. Um, so it was perfect. Yeah, and Ramsey, I, I'll still never forget uh, hearing the buzz. And of course, there was no a lot, not not cell phones back then, not a lot of tons of social mm-hmm. media. There was internet, but I just remember when you and uh, yeah, KD, y'all started raising the level of the, of the Butler program back to the the glory days, yeah. making playoff runs. But you guys were winning football yep. games, and then you go to Tuscaloosa in the summer. And I start hearing yeah. that, you know, KD is about to get an offer from Alabama. But then all of a sudden, this is <laughs> uh, you start hearing this buzz that, hey, the quarterback's pretty yeah. good too, and he's a, he's yeah. having a really good camp at DB. And uh, that's when this uh, the whole that's when it, the whole journey started really taking off, where you guys were able to also play together on the yeah. college level. People don't understand how hard yeah. that is. That's what I'm saying. And I mean, My and, God. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's so hard. <laughs> To you know, yeah. to become a great high school player, and then to be right. able to have that platform you guys were afforded at the University of Alabama. Absolutely, you know I'm not the best right now uh, with the statistics in regards to the, you know, number of kids that come out of high school and are able to yep. receive a full student athlete scholarship, man, to a you know a major uh, you know university. And you're absolutely right. I mean, um, it's so many athletes across this country and world that wake up believing that, you know, they could play on the next level when it comes to competitiveness in college. And um, my position where, you know, uh, Kenneth, you know I, hand, I handed the ball off quite a bit because the guy was so talented, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> through high school. And, oh, yeah. I, and, 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 you know, and I understood Coach Danley's, you know, philosophy. You know, we definitely wanted to establish the run. And in the midst of that, you talk about, you know, how challenging that can be, what I knew was was the fact that, you know, I would still have my opportunities. And my dad would, you know, encourage me in the sense of, hey, son, you're literally touching the ball every play, being the quarterback. So just know those opportunities are guaranteed to happen. And when they do, you know, it was important for me, you know, to uh, help our team win, you know, in high school and then going, obviously, to the University of Alabama where – you know, I had a chance to show my athleticism, um, being a basketball player and also, you know, running track. Um, and I had a chance to just show my skill set and being a defensive back. I mean, we didn't have, and people also understand, like, we were 6A at Butler, but we didn't have, you know, 70 players no. on the roster, man. Like, <laughs> we had maybe, like, I don't know, 45, 46, That's you know right. what I'm saying, <laughs> if that. So we're playing both sides, you know, out there against, you know, these massive teams, you know, at camp out there at, uh, in Tuscaloosa. So I had a chance to just showcase my athleticism. I think that in itself kind of showed coaches across the country that, hey, man, this kid, only he can he can sling it and can run, but also this guy, you know, can uh, play some real incredible defense. Former Butler, Alabama Crimson Tide standout, Ramsey Robinson joining us on the Neighbors Wealth Management Hotline. Uh, inducted into the Huntsville Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame last night, Ramsey. Uh, you do always, and you always carry it with you. Uh, and, and how much do you carry it with you? Uh, that title of Mister Irrelevant that gets put upon the last <laughs> draft pick in the draft. I mean, it got mentioned last uh, night, but how much do indeed. you still mention it and carry it with you? Man, I never mentioned it. Man, I'm just you know, <laughs> hey, far, hey, far as I'm no fellas, I was the first pick of the draft. Got drafted, <laughs> got drafted, <laughs> man. I, I got, I got a 12 year old son. I have yet to sit him down and say, hey, son, it's okay to be last. Your dad was last, and I'm still a success. Six years in the NFL, so man. Uh, he'll, he'll find himself getting the back of every line thinking it's okay. No, sir. Like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm talking about the years of the league, man. It's, it's so, I mean, I, I just, hey, they, they, we, don't we, forget we, our good friend Jerry Glanville. He, he, yeah. he, he comes on the drive all the time, Ramsey. He's a good friend oh, with, with Wes Neighbors. He always says, got not you. for long in the NFL. So if you stick around, yeah. you're doing something right. right. Hey, you got a parade out of the deal, though. Yeah. I did. I mean, oh, did. my gosh. It was uh, incredible, uh, the support. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, uh, the, the the board that puts together, uh, you know, that, um, that event and just, uh, man, the tradition. I mean, we had Brock Purdy, you know, um, as a competitor – in the Super Bowl. I mean, right. you're talking about a quarterback that has definitely taken off in the National Football League and earned the respect of his peers 
and also us leaders, executives. Um, so, like, when you look at uh, – you guys mentioned it, you know, at the start of the show, where, like, at the end of the day, even getting drafted, like, only, like, less than, like, 2% college athletes get drafted of those 255 uh, picks. And the fact that, you know, my name was, in fact, called where a team looked out and was like, hey, like, we believe in this kid's talent. We believe this kid's talent can help our team win. Um, and that was an incredible moment for me. And, you know, all the support that I received from the Mystery Relevant community and staff, like, it, it added just fuel to the fire for me to make sure that once I got to camp in Detroit, you know, that I made a lot of people right by picking me. Oh, there's no question about that. And then – you, it's all about opportunity that you create for yourself. And you, and then you've been able to transition to life after football, but you stayed yeah. in the game. And uh, uh, for, yeah. our, for our listeners, I mean, I know you spoke to our North Alabama Tide fans group, and this was before you had yeah. moved into football full time. You were still, uh, you know, you, you were working uh, in North Alabama, yeah. but you were still had aspirations to move into football. Mm-hmm. But yep. uh, kind of let everybody know, because I know Dave Bittinger was a great influence for you guys, you and, yeah, you and, you and uh, KD. He was a great guy, and he's he's been That's a great right. mentor for a lot of young people, and he adopted two young men that he's raised. But talk about, yeah. uh, you know, how you moved into football and how you used your opportunities to create relationships that got you where you are now is with, with, with three Super Bowl rings. Absolutely. Long story short, was able to obtain uh, a business management degree at the University of Alabama while being a student athlete. And uh, once my career concluded in 2013, I transitioned into business where I was, you know, managing a staffing agency out in, uh, you know, Castle Rock, Colorado. So really just putting my business management degree to work. Yeah. While I was in that business, you know, I was very successful at managing and training staff to hire employees for uh, opportunities of employment. And each day I would think to myself, like, wow, like, what if I could take this experience that I have right now being able to, you know, coach up staff and, you know, I got a degree and I'm working in a business, I'm in corporate world, you know, doing some really good work. What if I can take this experience and share it with professional athletes that are actively playing so that they can take full advantage of the moment as a player and also set themselves up for the rest of their life? So I went off to uh, the University of Pennsylvania, Wharton School of Business, and earned a uh, certification in professional player development. I uh, then um, added the academic academia uh, certificate, excuse me, diploma, earning my master's um, at Webster University in professional counseling to just sharpen my listening skills, uh, being able to work with professional athletes, and honestly just put together, you know, a resume uh, that my agent and I believe at the time would, you know, show teams that, you know what, like, let's ha- this, this, you know, this, uh, this guy can be a benefit and an asset to an organization, and man, I uh, was able to you know, been there nine years now. Um, you know, we focus on with these players. Uh, you know, I, I, I educate them in financial literacy and uh, continued education. It was great to see Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey uh, walk across the stage here uh, about a week ago. Uh, career development. You know, we got so many guys, Patrick Mahomes, Harrison Bucker, Travis again, uh, Chris Jones. We got so many guys, Justin, Justin Reed. So many guys doing a lot of things off the football field and career development, and then just personal development, man. A lot of, you know, a lot of people hear the name, you know, Kadarius Tony, and and may have a mis, you know, perception of who he is as a person. And man, I work, man. He's a good friend of mine. Like he's, right. I see him almost like uh, a nephew. You know, where I work with him in personal development and just trying to support him, you know, and just how to manage this pro life. And that's our whole locker room. So, man, I take my experiences from being a professional athlete, from being a student athlete, you know, from even just being, you know, a, 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 a kid in a family, and uh, I take those experiences with my education uh, to uh, pour into these players and do everything that I can to support their development on and off the football field. And now you've, you've been rewarded uh, their hard work. Three Super Bowl rings. Man, yeah. Like a dream, but yeah, yeah. A dream. I mean, that, that's got uh, a dream come yeah. true. But but also oh, being but being called back home to be put put into a, any kind of Hall of Fame is humbling. How, yeah. how was that honor, man? When you got the call? Oh my gosh, I, I man, my uh, I can't really put it in words. It, it, it uh, heart was heavy, you know, full of gratitude, uh, full of appreciation, and you know, you work so hard, uh, and even just hearing you guys say, you know, you know three. 
time Super Bowl champion. Like, you know, really, I haven't really taken time to really reflect even on just how meaningful that is because it's uh, I've always just gone on to the next challenge and to hear, you know, uh, that I was, you know, being inducted, you know, into the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, you just I just thought about a lot of the, the hard days uh, where I just didn't give up. You know, I stayed the course, and it's like that 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 relief, like ah, like. I knew I was right by just continuing the course. I knew I was right by not giving up. I knew I was right by just straining through the finish line. Like, I knew it was meant for something, you know, even greater than uh, what some people could see. And that something for me was just that reassurance that, you know what, I am good enough. I have been able to, you know, be great at something. And, man, it was just an overwhelming call. And even last night, I mean, just literally the best moment of my life. Ramsey Robinson, kind enough to join us on the Neighbors Wealth Management Hotline this morning, inducted into the Huntsville-Madison County Hall of Fame, Athletic Hall of Fame last night, back up to Kansas City today for uh, off-season workout with the, the, the Chiefs as that gets going. That's right. Drew would be disappointed if I didn't ask, did you meet Taylor Swift? Oh, Lord. <laughs> he said, oh, Lord. Yes, I did. Uh, I, 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 yeah, it was imperative that I did. Uh, I was a little uh, intimidated. She was a tad bit taller than me. And I'm oh, like, wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, this, this gal, uh, you know, she, she's a uh, man. She has such an aura around her, but a, a wonderful human being. Um, and I, it was just great to have her support, um, you know, with our organization and, uh, man, we're just going to continue to just uh, ride the wave, man, and, and keep putting our best foot forward. Well, I can say that I, I'm sure some people probably mentioned it last night, but he would have made a killing in NIL if he could have sold Bino shirts, man. <laughs> Believe in no other. <laughs> there is no question. That was that was before Lank. He, had, he was before Lank. Yeah, he had already like, established yeah. that. <laughs> Believe in no other. Oh, exactly, exactly, man. I can't believe that. Like, man, it would have been an interesting time back then. For oh, me, there for was sure. no question about that. <laughs> do you sit back, though, and do you sit back and, and look at college football now in the state that it's in and just kind of shake your head at times? You know, uh, I actually don't, man. I'm the type that tries to see the glass uh, half full, and it's just great conversations that I get to have with these college players yeah. coming out you know, looking to interview with us before, you know, if we're going to consider to draft them, you know, we're interviewing and I can get to know them. Man, it's been some, um, you know, informative conversations because, you know, my space is human development. I'm developing the yes. human being, the player. So, for me, man, just seeing these guys, uh, they're, they're just evolving at an efficiency rate than I was and my kids are. And honestly, man, um, you know, it isn't, it isn't their fault. So I just try to step in there and just try to understand what they think they know. These Gen Zers, I swear, they think they know everything because of Google, um, but lack the actual human experience. So the head shaking that I do do is when a guy li literally trying to tell me how to manage money when he's totally not making any sense whatsoever. And I can tell he saw some reel on TikTok that may have taught him that. So that's oh, where the head shaking comes for me. I love it. Oh, uh, man, all this, this has how, been good. How, yeah, how many, how many TikToks have I seen about $6,400? I mean, are you crazy? <laughs> this ain't true. Yes. Yeah, oh, call, call Ramsey Robinson. Let him help him with your money. <laughs> Jeez, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm here. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, well, I, my good. final question, though, is I know the draft is coming up next week, yep. I, and you kind of you try to help these guys, you know, acclimate themselves. Are you involved mm -hmm. at all in the pre-draft process, or do you wait till after they select the young men to get to know them and start trying to help them? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, more the latter. Uh, the the pre-draft phase for me is when the guys are in town, I get a chance to interview them, you know, get to meet them, get an idea, kind of just how they're wired and what they're. You know, who, who's their family members, you know, that may possibly um, will be there. But mostly on the back end. You know, once that the draft is concluded and uh, we have it set on who we're, we're picked, I'm responsible for managing that focus group that year, being that rookie class in addition to our veteran players. Uh, well, we look forward to the draft and yeah. to seeing if the the, uh, the Chiefs can go back to back. I mean, what a run it's been over the last yeah. five six years, and what Andy Reid's done yeah, and the man. organization y'all have built. You're a big part of it. Congratulations yeah. on going to the Hall, man. Yeah. You were one of the best athletes ever in this community. Thank you so uh, much. And and what you've done off the field is amazing too. It's just one of the great stories, and we appreciate you for taking some of the time before you fly back to KC. But continued success, brother, and we're we're so proud of you. And great speech uh, last night, by yeah. the way, as well. 
Oh, man, thank you so much. Really appreciate you both and uh, this time this morning. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, fellas. Uh, it means a lot to all of us in the community. Uh, sports, as you know, as you talked about, Scott, sports last night that I want to mention was, you know, solidarity is what binds us all. And even with this call, I mean, we're coming together on a common ground and agreement together and having a little fun with it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all and what y'all are doing because y'all are part of, you know, that, that, that core that keeps this together, you know, is this connection. So thank you so much, man, for everything that y'all are doing. Thank you, man. Right, thanks, Ramsey. All right, have a good one. Uh, Ramsey Robinson, kind enough. Good conversation. Oh, man, man he's, that was good. he's such a great guy, man. Ooh. And he's done so much with his life and his career. Yep. And, and he's earned everything. It's he's bootstrapped it because when he was coming up, you know, KD started making a name for himself and, and started helping, you know, that rant, that Butler program be noticed. And then Ramsey goes to that camp at Alabama and just balls out. And, I mean, they were definitely interested in KD, but they left wanting both of them. And I'll never forget that. That's the first time I ever heard that return Bino, believe in no other. And he he was the leader of that group. I mean, yeah. Kenneth was an outstanding athlete and a great uh, and a great representative of our community, always has been. But Ramsey just had this magnetism to him, man. He was always a leader of men. And what he's done with his life since, you know, c completing his, uh, you know, playing career has been nothing short of remarkable. And that's because of his forward thinking. He's just a great yep. dude. All right, let's get a break in. Going to wrap up Hour 1 coming up next. You're listening to Talking Ball on 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Trying to clear a wreck in Jackson County in Scottsboro, 72 and 79. And Pulaski, Pike, and Reddy section got updated to an injury type. So it may be a few more minutes before they get that one clear. From routine care to heart failure, Dr. Randall Burns and the team at Huntsville Heart Specialist on Bob Wallace have the expertise to care for all matters of the heart. Captain Nick in the 72 and Jeff Popeye Skywatch Traffic Center. The kitchen is the heart of any home. It's where the family gathers. It's where kids discover old recipes and make them their own. Just starting out or just now getting started on the dream kitchen you've always wanted? I'm Chris Haygood, and from all of us here at Bob Wallace Appliance to the home builders and the homeowners of the Huntsville area, a heartfelt thank you for buying local. We're in Huntsville, Florence, and Coleman, and online at BobWallaceAppliance.com. Gunner's Landing is one of the Tennessee Valley's finest golf experiences. Just 35 minutes from downtown Huntsville, Gunner's Landing's 18-hole championship jewel is open to the public seven days a week. Located in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, Gunner's Landing offers you a golf experience like no other. With beautiful Lake Gunnersville views throughout the round, Gunner's Landing is golf the way nature intended. Gunner's Landing's club repair shop offers a full range of services, including regripping and adjusting the lofts and lies of your clubs, even putters. Since the work is done in-house, your clubs will be returned to you in a timely manner. Unmatched in the North Alabama area, it is Gunner's Landing. Schedule your tee time today at Gunner'sLanding.com. That's Gunner'sLanding.com. Hey folks, this is Arthur Seaton, managing partner at University Kia, proudly saying Roll Tide and War Eagle. Stop into University Kia today and shop one of the area's largest selection of new Kias, including Forte's, Celtos, Telluride's, and Popular Carnival, and fully electric EV6. View all the great specials at UniversityKia.com and get pre-approved in minutes so you can drive home your new Kia if you really want, because we want to see you in a University Kia. All right, welcome back. Talking Ball 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Scott Tyson, Drew Arman. Welcome back in. Short, short time left here in our number one. Big thank you to Ramsey Robinson. Absolutely, man. Kansas City Chiefs Director of Player Engagement. Wow. From, Believe I mean, in no other. Inducted into the Huntsville Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame last night. Great, great speaker. He did the uh inductees address last night the response just just a great guy great conversation there um 
Coming up at the bottom of the hour at, at 8.30, uh, we will have a, another conversation. Uh, this time, though, it's going to be Tyler Thompson as we talk Kentucky basketball because there's a lot to talk about there uh, with the Wildcats, and that'll be a little bit later in our Number two, two five six five seven six four nine seven seven. If you want to get in before the hour break, you got a minute or so. Uh, but we'll also open up with phone calls too to kick off hour number two at eight o'clock. Again, two five six five seven six four nine seven seven. And and Ramsey's so impressive, and there's a lot of people listening, and they've uh, they were all like uh, blown away. And and you, it's what you should expect, though. Ramsey's always been a special guy. Um, he was a point guard. He was a quarterback. He was a uh, you know, a very smart defensive back. I mean, he's always had a, a great mind, both for right. uh, as an athlete, as a, a leading, uh, you know, uh, on the football field, and then also with his football IQ, and then all, his, the choices and decisions he made off the field. I mean, this is a guy that's always maximized his potential, uh, and that's why he's a three-time Super Bowl champion. That's why he's in the Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame, man, because of what he did both on and off the field. He's one of the – the best success stories to ever come out of Huntsville because, you know, he chose the right path every time. And, and there's a lot of young men in, in uh, this city and then throughout the, the United States even. And these, these guys with the Chiefs organization, they need to, you know, definitely listen to Ramsey and definitely take his counsel because he will put you on the right path. All right. Uh, coming up tomorrow, uh, I know we've got more guests coming up from, from the Hall of Fame. Uh, we'll have it at Thursday, and we'll have some on Friday as well. So uh, make sure you, you tune in. Uh, Absolutely, to talking yeah. ball all week because we'll special class this week. But they're all special. But they you know, are a lot of great folks. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see here. Short, short, short time left here. Kicking off hour number two. Uh, we mentioned it. We'll go over. Uh, wait till you hear what Ohio State is paying for their coaching salaries for their coaching pool. Not for their head coach, but for their assistant coaching pools. Uh, Georgia and Ohio State by far have set the table. Did either one of them win the championship? Nope. Nope. But they're going to pay to win one. Yeah, they're certainly trying to pay. That's for sure. Did they either make? Did they even make the playoff last year? Nope. But they probably should this year. Now, hopefully, you know, for the well, it's an for expanded the, field for their sake, they won't gag. Maybe there won't be an Oakland out there. <laughs> oh, the days of us seeing that on the college football playoffs, I don't think will ever happen. Yeah, I don't think it'll ever happen. Uh, anyway, that's hour number one in the books. Hour two is going to get underway here in just a minute or so. Make sure you join us, 256-576-4977. That's, we'll kick off hour two with your phone calls and talk a little college football coming up next. This is Brent Musburger's v Action Update on 97.7 ESPN The Zone. Unlike other credit cards that decline sports betting transactions or treat them as a cash advance, the G-Bank Visa Signature Card can load directly to your favorite sportsbook apps. G.Bank slash v the NBA play-in tournament starts tonight. Two Western Conference games on the schedule. The Lakers visit New Orleans. L.A., a one-and-a-half point underdog, minus 115 on the money line. Golden State heads to Sacramento, where the Kings are three-and-a-half point underdogs, plus 125 on the money line. Tomorrow, Miami battles Philadelphia. The Heat, the road team, a four-and-a-half point underdog, plus 160 on the money line. Then it'll be the Hawks and Bulls at United Center in Chicago. The Bulls by three-and-a-half. Atlanta, plus 130 on the money line. Favorites to win the NBA title. Boston plus 190, Denver plus 320, the Clippers and Bucks plus 1400. Get the latest lines and more at vsin.com. WCZN, Union Grove, Huntsville, Alabama. 
97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Welcome to Talkin' Ball with Scott Tyson and Drew DeArmond. Call into the Neighbors Wealth Management Hotline now, 256-576-4977. That's 256-576-4977. Now, here's Scott and Drew. It is hour two of Talking Ball, 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Scott Tyson, Drew DeArmond, 256-576-4977. If you would like to visit with us on a Tuesday morning, feel free to do so. Uh, now again, two five six five seven six four nine seven seven. Ohio State spent a lot of money on a lot of players this year. No secret. NIL. Uh, they they retooled their roster with big names, putting all the chips in the center of the table. Getting guys from Alabama. Getting guys from Ole Miss. I mean, just plucking names to help them elevate their program. So they hope they're also paying their coaching staff. And paying them a lot. This is not including Ryan Day's salary. Or, you know, remember they they hired a very high-profile offensive coordinator. They are paying Chip Kelly $2 million a year. Yeah. They're paying their defensive coordinator $2.2 million a year. Overall, Ohio State is... Okay. Ohio State is paying $11.43 million dollars for their assistant coaching pool. That is the most in college football. We have not seen that amount since 2009. Ohio State, Georgia is a close second at $10.1 million to pay their coaching staff. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Ohio State's going all in. I'd like to know what their payroll is for their players. I think it's even more than the the uh, $11 million. Is it worth it? If they gag, no. Now, if they get to the uh, college football national championship game, have a chance to win a title, then I'm sure it is. But if it, uh, they sure as hell didn't get their money's worth last year. <laughs> and I guess that's why uh, they had uh, you know pill for Caleb Downs, pill for Julian Sayan, and you know Quinchon and pill Judkins. For, well, Quinchon Judkins, but also Seth McLaughlin. They had to get a, a trio from Alabama. And like I said, like I told some folks, you got to go hire some winners when you can't. Roland is with us on the phone lines this morning. Good morning, Roland. What's up, Roland? Good morning, guys. Uh, how y'all doing today? We're doing Good. well, sir. Uh, I, the reason I called, I was reading an article yesterday. I believe it was uh, the guy from Tuscaloosa. That's put some news. Is it Chase something? Chase Goodbread, yeah. And he, I think, I believe that's him. His article was uh, how Alabama's in trouble, basically. Uh, and I think he talked about uh, the coaching staff. It, it, they, you know, they wouldn't stress in being physical, and uh, you know, this is a real negative article on the on coach the board and coaching staff. You know, and I was wondering if you read that, Drew. I did not see that article yesterday. No, sir. Uh, but I just thought it was kind of a negative uh, article, and it basically talking about you know Alabama uh, has uh, went away from being physical with uh, DeBoer, and I don't know how you can see that this early in the process, you know. No, and, I uh, mean I, I thought they I, they ran the ball well Saturday. I think DeBoer was pleased with the physicality there. I mean it's going to be a different style, no doubt about it. But I mean. I think it worked pretty good. Last year they played for the national championship, and uh, in many cases during that journey they were out talented, but he out coached some people. And you you can't win in football if you're not physical. And I definitely think that Washington was physical enough. You know, uh, again, uh, Alabama uh, under Nick Saban uh, since 2014 <coughs> has thrown the football as well as anyone. Uh, now at times they haven't run the ball as well as they wanted to. So. Again, it's not like they've been playing joyless murder ball, as people like to refer to it, for the entire time under Nick Saban. They've they've evolved and adapted, and it'll it'll look somewhat different. But I think uh, you know, Kalen DeBoer will do the same thing. Let me ask you a quick question, Drew and Scott, uh, whoever wants to answer it. Uh, on the quarterback situation, I guess the only the biggest disappointment I got with a with Coach DeBoer so far is letting Julian Sayan get away. 
And was that because he brought in uh, the kid from Washington? Because if that's the case, I mean, he, I think he made a big mistake. I mean, Julian Sayan is going to be a superstar in college football, I think. And they let him get away. I mean, it's set up real perfect for him as far as when he, you know, probably get a chance to play and all, all that and develop his next, you know, year or two and let him get away. I, I, I question that part. Well, I'll just say this, um, Roland. Uh, the, the, the head coach that recruited him retired. The offensive coordinator that recruited him left. Then he followed said offensive coordinator to Ohio State, and then that, and then he stayed for about two weeks, a month, or whatever the hell it was. And then he got the head coaching job at Boston College. So I don't really think it was the fault so much of Kalen DeBoer. I think as soon as Nick Saban left, as soon as Bob left, I think they were looking to get out. I don't think they wanted to stay. I think they weren't comfortable with it uh, because a lot of the people that recruited him. And it turned out he had a relationship with Tommy Reese. Is Tommy Reese still there? No, he's the tight ends coach of the of the Browns. So I'm not so sure that that. Uh, and I think I th- and I, I and I think Kalen DeBoer had a good feel for that. I think he knew that Julian Sand was going to bail. Uh, I, I, you know, they, I know they had a brief meeting with DeBoer, but I think they were, their minds were already made up. Uh, and just from people that I talked to behind the scenes, they were already ready to move on. And Ohio State to him was the best move. And I heard he looked okay in the spring game, didn't look uh, spectacular. We'll see how good he ends up being. Uh, but certainly, I think Austin Mack has a lot of potential. I was going to say, I you mean, know, it's... He, he also didn't look great in the spring game, but he's he hasn't even turned 18 years old yet. So, right. I mean, I, I wouldn't make any snap judgments on Kalen DeBoer with the Julian Sands situation because, again, I think that was more – the coaching changes and everything that under the, 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 the uh, and the departures uh, during the recruitment of Julian Sand, and then I think as soon as Nick Saban retired, I think they felt like yeah. Tommy Rees was not going to be back either. And Tommy had recruited him at Notre Dame, so it was about relationships, and he had not been recruited by Kalen DeBoer. And I just think the family felt like they needed to go elsewhere, and uh, and they were trying to follow Bill O'Brien to to, uh, to Ohio State. Because uh, I think they're very, you know, comfortable with him, but he didn't like he didn't stay either. So it'll be interesting to see how Julian does at Ohio State. Is that just one of those? Ber- is that just one of those? The kid commits because of the coach, not because oh, of yeah. the school. There's a lot. There, that a lot of that was going on. That's why a lot of guys transferred out of Alabama because they're not playing for Nick Saban. You know what I'm saying? They Caleb Downs' dad said as much. That's why he's a, a you know at, with the sucks. So we'll see if he can help their defense getting better. Well, guys, great show and uh, the appreciate you. The uh, the uh, uh, thing with Ranger Ross and y'all hit it out of the park. It was awesome. No, yes, appreciate it, you. man. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, yeah. thanks. And look, that's going to happen. Not not just in Alabama. Yeah. I mean, you look at it when when North Carolina. I mean, Mac Brown when he was at Texas had a lot of talent coming in to Texas. Wins a national championship. Texas doesn't feel like he's doing enough. He leaves. A lot of recruits leave. They're, they're, it, it happens at a lot of different places when a coach leaves uh, the, the talent level. I mean, shoot, Kentucky's going through it right now in basketball. Uh, John Calipari heads to Arkansas. Uh, Look, man, if, if, it, if it, Nate Oates had gone to Kentucky – and, and a took lot of the, the guys Kentucky from the job, Alabama you might as well gone. start drinking because at yeah. least three quarters of them, including the signees, wouldn't be there. I mean, that's just the way it is. You can't get on and, and criticize to me, uh, Kalen DeBoer, because, oh, well, Julian Sand. Man, we don't even know how good Julian Sand's going to be. I mean, right. come on. There, there's been so many five star quarterbacks. I mean, JT Daniels was supposed to win the Heisman and be a first round pick, he wouldn't be drafted in the Canadian Football League now. I mean, it, it doesn't always work out. I was going through trying to find the article, if there was an article, by Chase. Yeah. And and the last one I that, didn't see. It, I didn't I mean, see anything, but uh, the one that the lay one of the last ones that he did was what would be a reasonable expectation for Kalen DeBoer in his Alabama debut. And Goodbread put in there in the article that earning a bid to the 12 team college football playoff is a fair expectation for Kalen DeBoer in his first year. But he says, is it a catastrophic failure if he ends up being the 13th best team in year one and misses the playoffs? And and Goodbread says no to that. But he also says maintaining Alabama as a playoff qualifier 
is a strong, reasonable goal. If Kalen DeBoer is and does finish 13th, I mean, is is that a step backwards for this Alabama program, or is that just him trying to build the foundation the way that he wants it done? Well, I mean, certainly it's not a great first year if you don't make the playoff. I mean, I think he has enough talent, um, but you have to also keep people healthy. We'll see what they do in the transfer portal, and they have a tough schedule. Uh, there's been there's there's already been a few people in the media that don't pick Alabama to make the playoff. They have picked Alabama to go eight and four. A lot of that is just praying, crossing your fingers and your toes because Darth Vader retired and uh, <laughs> who had been just basically beating uh, these other teams that they cover over the head for years. And you're just praying that oh, hopefully Alabama will take a step back. But what if they don't? Then what you gonna do? You might as well just start drinking. I mean, I guess. I mean. <laughs> Well, I mean, look, it's no coincidence. Or go focus on basketball like uh, yeah, it's no coincidence like Arkansas that Ohio, is. <laughs> Ohio State spends $11.43 million on their assistant coaches. Georgia is spending ten point yeah. one. Those two teams have the best odds to win the college football national championship this year. And I mean, and that's what's going to be the, the entry going into the season. We have not seen, except for – Spring scrimmages, which mean nothing. No, they don't. You, you want to see what a Kalen DeBoer football team looks like in the fall. But see, that's what I was trying to tell people about the spring game. You can't really discern anything because there there might be three or four starters that aren't even on the team. So, I mean, you can't get all whomped up with what, you know, well, they, they didn't do this and so-and-so didn't get – I mean, they, they're not showing everything they've got, and, you know, they don't. And they, Ole Miss and, showed nothing. Yeah. <laughs> they they, so they ate go. hot dogs. Alabama showed something. And they had a bounce Ole Miss house. They showed nothing. They, showed a, they had a bounce house, I guess. And they, so nobody they, knows anything about they your team right now. They ate cotton candy, and, you know, they, they had a seven on seven tournament. And, but there and, are, I mean, there, I there's know. people that feel good about their program because they watch the spring game and they sit there and they say, well, you know, look, Carson Beck at Georgia. He's going to be a Heisman favorite because of what we saw last year and what we see in the spring. He's going to be a Heisman favorite, and Georgia's going to be so good. Georgia's had problems this spring. I mean, offensively, Georgia looks to be good. They're Defensively, really they've good. got a lot of X's. they got a lot of question marks, I believe, over there in Athens yeah. on the defensive side of the ball, a lot of them. Uh, let's go visit with Floyd real fast. Good morning, Floyd. Good morning, Floyd. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good, Good, sir. Uh, Just wanted to sort of help you out a little bit. The the article the gentleman was talking about was by uh, Joseph Goodman. Oh, uh, that's a shock. Uh, (laughs) Now, that is a shock. (laughs) It's by Pete Goodman. He sat next to me in the – in the in the uh, press room, I I don't read his trash because I think he's a scumbag. So I don't really care because all he tries to do is get clicks. So I right. mean, and and then he asks stupid questions like, "Hey, coach, uh, you know, uh, how was this first A day compared to Sioux Falls?" You know what I'm saying? I mean, what? Who cares? Yeah, the 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 title of it was the sorry shape of Alabama football. Yeah, like I say, that guy's a turd. He's been on this show before, but he never will be again because I don't respect him. I don't respect his work. I don't respect what he's about. So he's not coming over for dinner hell anytime no. soon. Piss on okay. him. So, all right. So he's out for dinner. Uh, so he's nothing go. but a muckraker. If you grew up knowing what a muckraker is, that's all he is. That's all right, he tries to right. do is get people to click on his trash. And uh, he's not going to be yeah. on this show. Being from Walton County, I don't know what a muckraker is. but Yeah. But I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, look, I, I I love Walker County, so I I I, 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 I don't I don't love Al Dot Dumb and Joseph Goodman. Now, there's some good people that work there. I mean, Ben <laughs> Thomas is a great guy. He wears a lot of hats, trying to cover the prep scene. But you know, as far as what Joseph Goodman tries to do, I mean, it's it's it it's it's awful, man. I just don't. Yeah. I don't consider that good journalism. I just considered he tries to you know he he does some good stuff for Samford. I guess he likes Bucky a lot, but. Well, the way he tries to cover the University of Alabama is just complete garbage. Yeah, I just wanted I just wanted to let you know, uh, uh, not not to discredit uh, Chase Goodbread. But yeah, because yeah, I know yeah. Chase, and that didn't yeah. really sound like Chase at all. I mean, it does right. sound like Joseph Goodman. It sounds like something right up his alley that he would yeah. some crap that he would write. Right. 
All right, guys. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you, Floyd. Appreciate it. So yeah. I'm looking at the article right, right now, right, and it here. says, on the sorry shape of Alabama football, and I'm looking at it and scanning it over. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, what he did, what Joseph Goodman did, was take emails that I think he got – and put those in an article mm-hmm. from other people. Um, William Keith, and so, I, I don't know, I guess they're fans or whatever, and he defends them or whatever and talks about them. Uh, basically, I think these are people panicking over the reaction of the spring game from Alabama. Shock. And, and, yeah. and, and Goodman answers it by saying, you know, they, they write about um, – He's trying to give a voice to the people that are panicking. And it says, calling Nick Saban a tyrant of a coach in a column isn't exactly a shot. It's more like a compliment. We all know how Saban ran his program. DeBoer does things differently. That was the point of the column and the type of the insight readers might find useful. Uh, when comparing Saban and DeBoer, he writes, linebacker Deontay Lawson said Saban was all business. Safety Malachi Moore called Saban a militant. DeBoer brings a softer touch, but hopefully that doesn't mean his teams are going to be soft on the field. I suspect not based on DeBoer's track record of success. Um, So, I mean, anyway, it's an interesting article. It does basically take, I guess, the criticism that DeBoer is getting from some and trying to make sense of it and spin it in a way that's not criticism. Uh, it's it's interesting. I think the title is misleading yeah, they, they, to the article. They they create the title to get you to click on it. But if you anybody has read Goodman stuff when it's compared to Alabama, it's usually always got some sort of negative connotation to it. So that's just the way it is. I mean, a fan. I, mean, I guess it's a fan. Philip Johnson writes. Yeah. I guess it's a fan. He says, this may be true, but the question remains, can DeBoer get the job done? I personally don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think the era of Alabama being a powerhouse is gone, and so goes the national titles. Um, Goodman responds by saying Alabama has Nick Saban and Paul Bryant. Pete Carroll is a legendary coach on the West Coast that all modern-day West Coast coaches aspire to be. Carroll was pretty easygoing, and it worked for him. Don't forget about uh, the GOAT metric system for all-time coaches and big money games. Pete Carroll. So, basically, it's fans panicking over what they were seeing, I guess, of the spring game and what they've seen so far of Kalen DeBoer. I mean, you can't – anybody trying to make a judgment on Kalen DeBoer before he ever coached a game, give yourself a lobotomy, shut up, and go away because you wouldn't know a football if it hit you in the face. Because you haven't watched anything. You know, he hasn't coached a game and you're already saying he's a bust. Shut up and go away. And for somebody to give uh, people that email that crap and write an article about it, it's stupid too. You know what I'm saying? He needs to go work for the New York Times or go be Biden's press secretary. (laughs) Stupid piss ant. Oh... We're only going to need a table for four eventually. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we've got to get a break in. And that AL.com, uh, you know, uh, employs him. It shows a lot about their leadership as well. Some of the garbage that I see written both politically and covering athletics. It's crap. Well, yeah, and you got to pay for 90% of the stuff now anyway. Well, I'm not paying for the shit. <laughs> Pardon me. You can go ahead and bleep that. Yeah. Whoops. Failure to sleep at the wheel on that one. That's Okay. As Ray used to say. Because that's what it is. You didn't mean to say it. I did. Didn't mean to say it. That's what Ray would say. <laughs> he didn't mean to. We got to get a break in. More talking ball and re return. You're listening to Talking Ball on 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. It's got a wreck at Weatherly and Four Mile Post. It's coming in as a no injury. Got an injury type reported at Franklin and Governors. It may actually be at Franklin and Rand. Everything else from earlier should be cleared out of the way now. You get two pieces of hand-breaded, juicy, tender signature chicken and a buttermilk biscuit for $4.99 at Popeye's. University and George 72 and Jeff, North Parkway, and now South Parkway. Captain Nick in the Popeye's Skywatch Traffic Center. 
It's a beautiful day for a ball game. Here it comes, and there it goes. Fly ball, deep left field, way back. This one is up. This one is gone. Grab your peanuts and cracker jacks and get ready to cheer on the Tide. Called third strike, a slider, lower inside corner. The Tide plays here all season long. Here's a spin. Here's Bowman's throw home. The slide, and he's safe. On your home for Alabama baseball, the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Tom Luganbill here for my friends at Woody Anderson Ford. Bobby White and his team take great pride in their service department, and you can see it the moment you walk into those beautiful new service lanes. And just like a championship team, they all work together to make sure your experience is second to none, whether you drive a Ford or not. Also, check out the gold-certified pre-owned inventory at Woody Anderson Ford for great deals every day. Stop by and see them at Jordan and Sparkman or at Woody Anderson of Madison on Hughes Road or visit WoodyAndersonFord.com. Everyone's favorite place to celebrate Cinco de Mayo this year is Coralejos Mexican Grill in Huntsville. Check out their reviews on Facebook and you'll see what people are raving about. For Cinco de Mayo, Coralejos Mexican Grill will feature $3 regular margaritas and all nachos will be half off. And there will be even more surprises. Celebrate Cinco de Mayo this year at Coralejos Mexican Grill, 1658 Old Monrovia Road in Huntsville. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram to stay updated on their specials. Isn't the story of the prodigal son an amazing story? Basically, a rowdy boy who literally wished his father dead ran away and consumed his wealth with hard and fast living. Yet the father looked for his return every day, and when the boy got tired of eating pig slop, he decided to return. What did the father do? As soon as he saw that boy, he ran to him, threw his arms around him, and killed the fatted calf for a great celebration. Hey, I'm John Dees, pastor of the Cross Point Church. If you're looking for a church home, come see us smack dab across the street from the YMCA in Madison. Oh, welcome back. Talking ball 97.7 ESPN, the zone. Scott Tyson, Drew, New Arm, and 256-576-4977. You can, mm, you can join us on a uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, we've been talking a little college football, a little college basketball, Huntsville, Madison County Athletic Hall of Fame. Coming up in just a little bit at the bottom of the hour, we're going to talk a little more Kentucky basketball, figure out what's going on there in Lexington. All of the fans all ecstatic over Mark Pope, but just like John Calipari walked into a situation where nobody was on the roster in Fayetteville, Mark Pope is quickly walking into a situation in Lexington where – But every coach will. No, they will. But will will it be this extent, though? I mean, Uh, to this extent. I mean, it's going to be every – especially a Power 5 job. When you have a coach leave for another job, uh, it's going to be – there's going to be a mass exodus. I mean, there's no question about it. Everybody's going to have to to, to deal with it, so – I mean, but, you know, yeah, Kentucky's got substantive NIL. They'll be able to put a roster together. Uh, they might even keep a couple of guys, that, uh, as we talked about earlier in the show. Uh, Arkansas has got Calipari. He's got a track record of bringing in talent. So both teams will, be, will end up being, uh, you know, NCAA level at, at worst tournament yeah. teams uh, when, all, when, all, when all of the dust settles. All right, let's go out to the phone lines. Jeff from the borough is with us. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. How's it going, guys? Good morning. I was say that guy that wrote that is probably into the into the opinion piece. I would say, and like say you like you said, Drew, you can This guy's got to coach a few ball games, but it's just the way his style is, and he's not like saving. That's why people oh, yeah. get know. A lot of people don't like change, man. They don't like change. Yeah, oh yeah, well they don't. Yeah, well when you change from that to that, yeah, I mean, but it's like it's like up here, it's not the same thing. But you know, Stocks was here 17, 18 years. Yeah. That was Mason. And people, he's, he's fired people up, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be different. I mean, he does things differently. That's just the way, that's just, but you can't, like you say, you can't, until he coaches two, three ball games, yeah. can't really judge the guy. And off a of spring game, no. I mean, I don't even watch spring games anyway. They're pointless. Who yeah. wants to watch them? Nobody cares. They want mm-hmm. to run, run around and tackle somebody don't get hurt. I mean, who cares what formation you run? But about what I want to ask you guys is, um, uh, I, I know Drew, you're a Braves fan. How do you feel about? Uh, I know you. I know you don't like Strider getting hurt, but the player you can see it is because of the pitch clock. What do you think? Oh, the pitch clock they pitch put in. Clock. All, these, all these pitchers are getting injured. They said the player you can said that. You think that's true? No, 
I don't think it's because of the pitch clock. I mean, I, look, I know they wanted to speed up the game, but that doesn't have anything to do with the pitching injuries, in my opinion. It, I'll tell you what has something to do with it. They don't – there's no workload, man. They don't – when they're coming up through the minor leagues, they're all on pitch counts. They don't want them extending themselves. And then when they start doing what a Strider did, like Strider struck out 280 batters last year and led the led the majors in strikeouts and – uh, and you know, and and, yeah. and and logged heavy innings probably for the first time in his pro career. It's wear and tear, Jeff. And then you end up with a guy getting hurt because to me, they don't build up stamina. They don't do it. Uh, but it's it's inevitable almost with the way baseball's been specialized as far as they do with these with these relievers and everything. Oh, Eventually, yeah. a guy is going to break down. And I don't think it has anything to do with the pitch clock. It's just the way. That uh, you know that they've that, that pitchers are developed this day. Look, and time. the average inning, the average start for a pitcher now is five point two. Yeah, innings. they don't go deep in games. Five point no, two. Go deep. I agree. I agree with yeah. that. They don't. But they yeah. don't. They don't. Um, and Spencer yeah. always his pitch counts tend to be elevated because he strikes out so many guys. I mean, the thing the thing is, you, you got guys like Nolan Ryan, and Nolan never had much arm trouble, and uh, that's what's so amazing and. Uh, you, you know, and, and, and the Bob Feller's going way back, but it's just one of those things. I, I just don't think that they, uh, they build guys up enough. They don't allow them to extend themselves. And then when they start wanting them to do that in the major leagues, when you're wanting guys to go seven, eight innings, uh, you know, it, it, you're, you're, you know, it can lead to wear and tear. So I just think it's the way they develop pitchers. Let me ask you this. You, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure y'all do. But do you think now? I mean, I, I've been done preps 25 years. Years ago, that they they had pitch counts on high school pitchers. They can't pitch, but no more than 120 pitches in a game. Do you think that's on that cost? They well, I mean, I, they've been doing that here too. I yeah. like that rule, though. I don't because. Used to be back in the day, like before they made all the playoff rounds, starting with round one, best two out of three. It was just you know the first two or three, just really the first three rounds was right. one and done. And they would tra- you'd throw if you had one pitcher, you'd be throwing the same guy every week, and so you'd, you'd have there'd be a lot of wear and tear. And and I've seen guys throw 150 pitches, and even oh, yeah. and then and even in some of these series, you would see guys uh, maybe a guy pitching game one and then coming in relief in game three. I'm glad they have those kind of pitch counts in that situation but yeah. I'm just saying in pro baseball especially and even in college some but especially in the pros when they draft these guys I just I, I think they it's, it's they kid glove it so much to where they and they specialize everything to the point where hey um, these guys aren't used to throwing either every day or they're not used to throwing deep in games and it leads to wear and tear and, it, you know, and, and, and it, it leads. And I, I will say this too, and this is not really Major League Baseball's fault. Some of these kids need to not play baseball year round. Yes. yes you know what I'm saying? 365 Yeah, I'm throwing, talking about throwing, fall throwing, ball, throwing, spring throwing, ball, throwing, ball, summer. Yes. Yeah, exactly, Jeff. Ball, right. 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 Give right, your right. arm a rest for a couple months, yeah. two, three months. Yeah. 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 Rest yourself three or four months and, and stop yes. doing it year round because that leads to a lot of the over usage in I high agree, school. I agree, I agree with that. 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 A couple minutes ago, this is this is kind of funny. You got to laugh at this. Uh, Key Lawrence was at Oklahoma, transferred to Ole Miss during yeah. the winter. Or actually, I should say, he started his career at Tennessee, then went to Oklahoma, mm-hmm. registered 149 tackles, three forced fumbles, three interceptions, and 35 games for the Sooners. Went into the portal in the off season, transferred to Ole Miss in the winter. Yeah. He is now back in the transfer portal again. Yeah. So. There you go. Okay. In case you wanted to know, apparently he did not get invited in the tug of war or the hot dog eating contest and felt left out and is now going in the portal. We got to get a break in. (laughs) Let's talk Kentucky basketball when we come back. You're listening to Talkin' Ball on 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. 
From the Fox 54 Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jordan Dressman. A mostly cloudy sky this afternoon, maybe an isolated shower across the Tennessee Valley, but it looks like the vast majority of us are going to be dry. Temperatures climbing into the upper 70s and lower 80s. We're going to drop into the lower 60s as we head into the overnight early into your Wednesday morning. Better opportunity for showers and thunderstorms through Wednesday afternoon. It is going to be a little bit cooler. Temperatures climbing into the mid and upper 70s. I'm Chief Meteorologist Jordan Dressman on your home for ESPN Radio, 97.7 ESPN The Zone. Had a report of a wreck at Weatherly and Four Mile Post. I think it's actually going to end up being on Bailey Cove near Myra Vista. No injury reported there. Franklin and Governors reported as an injury type. Still working on it. Had concrete spilled on the road at Madison Boulevard in Slaughter. Sounds like that's been taken care of. Snelling can help with admin, accounting, or business support personnel. Snelling, how the area's best companies hire talent. Huntsville.snelling.com. Captain Nick in the Jordan Line. Popeye Skywatch Traffic Center. Eagle Masonry and Insulation. It's right there in the name. Eagle is your one-stop shop for block, stone, or brickwork, monument signs, and outdoor kitchens and fireplaces. Eagle also offers the finest craftsmanship and insulation, including fiberglass or spray foam insulation, and of course, insulation removal. Philip Love and his team have years of experience, bringing the region the best in masonry and insulation services. For more information and a quote, visit insulatewitheagle.com or call 256-755-1556. Eagle saves you time. Eagle saves you money. If you're looking for a new couch, you could cut down on expenses by bundling your car and renter's insurance with Progressive. Because you know you've had this couch for too long. Sure, you've had good times together, but a ripped up cushion is not a fond memory. It's a sign. Notice how other people have couches with two armrests. Now that's living, right? No, it's just normal. So bundle your renters and car insurance with Progressive and put the savings toward a new couch. Please, it's time. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. Not available in all states. The kitchen is the heart of any home. It's where the family gathers. It's where kids discover old recipes and make them their own. Just starting out or just now getting started on the dream kitchen you've always wanted? I'm Chris Haygood, and from all of us here at Bob Wallace Appliance to the home builders and the homeowners of the Huntsville area, a heartfelt thank you for buying local. We're in Huntsville, Florence, and Coleman, and online at BobWallaceAppliance.com. From heirloom diamonds to contemporary jewels, Loring & Company is the place to find something truly special. Whether shopping for a diamond ring for that once-in-a-lifetime occasion or marking a milestone birthday or personal achievement with a Rolex watch, you'll find just the thing in our edit of the world's most sought-after brands, including David Yerman, Roberto Coyne, Marco Bichego, and Fopé. Expect a treasure trove of the world's most unique, even breathtaking earrings, rings, necklaces, and bracelets, making choosing just one piece a challenge in itself. Loring & Company Jewelers on Airport Road. Sports Talk 24-7-365, your full-time sports station. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Is 97-7 ESPN The Zone. Doesn't anyone do any work around this joint anymore? All right, welcome back. Talking about 97-7 ESPN The Zone. Part of our conversation this morning has centered around college basketball and the ever so changing landscape that is the transfer portal, how it has changed everything within college basketball. And it has changed the look of Kentucky. It has changed the look of Arkansas. It has changed the look of USC, SMU. SMU is where it all started because Andy Edenfield whoop, leaves yeah. USC to go to SMU. That started the dominoes. Musselman. Musselman goes from Arkansas to USC. Then John Calipari goes to Arkansas. Mark Pope goes from BYU to Kentucky. Now he has to um, build the Kentucky roster. Uh, the fan base excited. Oh, awful. He wall. won the press conference, did Mark Pope. I mean, it was uh, it, uh, unlike anything I've ever seen, except for maybe, I guess, Al- Alabama's first spring game under Nick Saban when they filled the football stadium. But that was a, as, as crazy and as energized a press conference as I've ever seen in my life. Just yeah. watching all the people come in, watching all the people outside. Oh, they pulled the bus inside yeah. Rupp Arena, had the 96 the bus National inside, Championship Having all those, all those yeah. guys, all, uh, you know, all Pope's teammates on the bus. That was really cool. But we're going to talk about that and more with the editor-in-chief of Kentucky Sports Radio, and they're part of On3 sports.com now and i've known her for many many years as uh, we were able to reconnect in nashville and she's been on with us uh and uh, talked to kentucky many times yeah but it's always great to catch up with tyler thompson tyler welcome back to huntsville how are you 
I'm doing great. You know, a very, very boring 10-day stretch for Kentucky <laughs> basketball. <you know? laughs> was it? Wow. Of course I'm kidding. Oh, there was a wow. lot of zigs and zags in there. Though. Yeah. I mean, it was this guy, then it's that guy. Oh, wait a minute. It's Mark Pope. <laughs> yeah, it's been wild. And just this morning, the news is breaking that Pope oh. has his first commitment at Kentucky. Okay, um, yes. Colin Chandler. Okay. Yeah, he was a, a BYU signee. Oh, actually, gotcha. Yeah, he's been on a Mormon mission for the past two years. So he's a top 35 recruit in the 2022 class. So if you had told me 10 days ago, two weeks ago, I'd be writing about a recruit coming off a two-year mission, I don't know if I would have believed you. Dang it. But Wish here I had we known. are. I, we, I could have made a lot of money. Somebody could have made a kill. the lottery, bingo. You know, boom. <laughs> there you go. But No, but that's that's awesome. Um, you know, and of course, a lot of people, including myself, consider that 96 Kentucky team the best in school history. I mean, it was so deep, such a great team to watch. I watched them win the national championship. It was Rick Pitino's first. And that team means a lot to so many people. And the way they brought the, you know, the bus in there and they brought Pope in with his teammates, that was uh, one of the most unique and coolest, I think, entrances to a press conference I think I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. I was there, um, and, you know, I was 11 years old in 1996 when Kentucky won the title. And awesome. that team, they were rock stars. Yeah, they, they were, were absolutely really were, yeah. rock stars. Mm-hmm. And Mark Pope was the captain. And, you know, the iconic shot was him coming off of the bus that they pulled into Rupp for the national championship celebration. He came off holding the trophy. Mm. So to see the bus come in at his introductory press conference, and all of these letter winners, all of these former players coming off one by one. And then when the 96 players came out, they dimmed you know, the lights even more and turned on their old intro music, which was the Chicago Bulls intro music yeah, at the time. Right. And that's then right. you just see one by one they come off, and then Pope coming out with the trophy held over his head like so many years before. I mean, you get goosebumps. There are few moments in life as a sports fan where you have that type of moment, that type of nostalgia. And it was just, I'll never forget it. It was amazing. It's yeah. like a breath of fresh air for the program. That's what she in, called it, yeah. in, in a good way. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, look, when John Calipari was hired, the same, there was a lot of excitement there as well because it was a big name, a guy that had the national championship pedigree. I mean, what he had accomplished up to that point. Um, but it just goes to show you, even at a place like Kentucky, you can become stale and Mark mm-hmm. Pope is delivering that fresh air. Absolutely. You know, 15 years is a very long time. And I think uh, all Kentucky fans will be grateful for what John Calipari did at Kentucky. He brought the program back after the Billy Gillespie era. He took the program to height. You know, we have very rarely seen. But in the past five years, it had gotten stale. You know, fans were getting tired of it. I think even Cal was tired of it. And the results clearly weren't there in March. And by the end of it, we all knew a change was needed. Now, we I think most fans thought that would come at the end of the season, but we had this weird two-week period where Mitch Barnhart, Kentucky's athletic director, stood by Cal and said, we're going to keep, we're going to give this another shot. You know, he's our coach moving forward. You know, just for two weeks later, <laughs> for the rug to kind of be pulled out from under everybody, and Cal is going to Arkansas. So it's it's been a really weird, weird month for Kentucky fans. I will say, you know, it, there was some initial skepticism and concern when the Mark Pope was, mm. you know, the news broke that he was going to be coach on Thursday night. But I think in the past, in the 70, 72 hours after that, it's been a complete 180. I think everybody's on board. And I kind of think he's the only, like, coach who could do that, being a former player being a team captain, he's kind of brought the fan base back together, and it's it's been remarkable. Well, uh, I, we, we've had your colleague Matt Jones on a few times as well, and there's no one that's more plugged in and well-versed. And I've been following him, listening to his radio shows. I've been listening, uh, following his ex account. But kind of for us, I know you, 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 you guys work so closely together. You're so interconnected. Walk our listeners through kind of how this coaching search went because it happened quickly. I mean, we went through one in 48 hours here in our state for when Nick Saban <laughs> retired. But walk us through how this went. It was it was a a roller coaster ride, but a quick one in bringing Mark Pope home. Yeah. So the news broke that Cal was going to Arkansas a week ago on Sunday. Right. And immediately, you know, early coaching list. 
kind of broke, and there were three names that emerged. Scott Drew at Baylor, who has a long time been a friend of Mitch Barnhart. That's right. You know, he's had success. He kind of was seen as a, a good hire, but one of the safer ones of the top three. And then you had Danny Hurley, who was coming off his second straight national championship at UConn. And then you had Billy Donovan, who, if you've been a Kentucky fan oh, yeah. you know, for more than 20 years, you know this is a song and dance thing. <laughs> He's already turned Kentucky down twice in, you know, in the 2000s when uh, Tubby Smith left and then Billy Gillespie. So there's history there. And, you know, Kentucky went after Scott Drew. I think they thought that if they offer hit, offered him the job, he would say yes. And I think he really did consider it. They hmm. flew his family to Lexington to kind of check things out. And then Mitch Barnhart said, we'll give you a night to talk it over with your family, pray on it, et cetera. And he woke up the next day and said, you know what? <clears throat> We're happy here at Baylor. We're just going to have to pass. So from there, Danny Hurley became the primary candidate. And Kentucky's boosters came together and put together just an insane offer. That's what him. it sounded like. like. One, <laughs> yeah, like one that you would think no one could turn down. <laughs> you know, it was rumored to be eight to nine years for 90 to $100 million. That's that's incredible money. Yes. But Danny Hurley decided he was happy at UConn. Mm. So he turned it down. And then it was like, well, the next person on the list is Billy Donovan. So, But the problem was the Bulls are still playing. Mm. You know, they're in a play-in game tomorrow. So there was going to have to be a couple days in which, you know, at least five days in which you would have to wait before you could even have active talks with them. So it felt like we were going to go into a, well, We'll wait and see kind of mode with the coaching search. Only for two hours later, you know, Matt Norlander and all the national guys float that Mark Pope is the primary candidate for the search. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of whiplash to Kentucky fans. You know, you hear you're going after Scott Drew. Yeah. You're going after Danny Hurley, only for them to turn you down. And, no, oh, we're going to wait on Billy Donovan. We might talk to Bruce Pearl, these other big names. And then Mark Pope. You know, we all love Mark Pope. Oh, yeah. He was a former player, beloved. He's doing great things at BYU, but he hadn't won an NCAA tournament game. So I think there was initially just a ton of concern about, you know, this is a crucial hire for the Kentucky basketball program at a crucial time. And as much as Mark Pope is beloved, I think everybody was just very worried right off the jump. But, you know, the next morning – you know, the news was officially announced. And I think once fans had some time to digest it, everybody was back on board. And the push to get him, like, to get fans back on board was kind of incredible. Yeah, it seemed you know, like that, yeah. Yeah, his former teammates came out in support of him. Jeff Shepard, who, of course, is the, the father of Reed Shepard, Kentucky's star freshman who's likely going to be an NBA lottery pick. He came out and supported the hire. Rick Pitino. <laughs> that was really <laughs> cool, coach. by the way. That yeah. was cool. Um, and then getting a series with St. John's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rick Pitino came out with a two-and-a-half-minute video in which he endorsed Pope. And I never thought I'd see the day where Rick Pitino would comfort BBN, would comfort Kentucky fans about a hire. But that's <laughs> yeah. where we are. So It's wild. So now that he's there – he won the press conference. That's all great. Yeah. Now Kentucky fans and and I'm sure Mark Pope. It's you got to build a roster now. Now now you got to get to work. Yeah. You know you you won everybody over. Now the hard job begins. Yeah, absolutely. And you know he's been having meetings with the current players to discuss if they want to stay or not. And most of them are are leaving and going in the transfer portal or to the NBA, which is to be understood. You know they didn't come to Kentucky to play for Mark Pope. Um, I think Kentucky fans feel a lot better this morning hearing the news that Colin Chandler will be coming to Kentucky. Um, obviously, as I said, getting used to a player who's been on a two-year mission uh, coming to your program is going to be an adjustment, but he's he's a good guy. He's a good player. He's a top 35 recruit in 2022. It's just going to be a big adjustment of you may get a couple five-star guys, but it's not going to be an entire roster like you have with John Calipari. But that said, you know, there's going to be more pieces from the transfer portal. You're going to have, you know, if Pope continues to recruit these Mormon guys, 21-year-old freshmen who, after graduating high school, went and worked on a mission for two years. Your your team is automatically going to be older. So, But I think fans are ready for that, you know. Yes. 
I think fans really enjoyed and embraced the talent that came in under Calipari, but the college basketball game has changed. You know, mm-hmm. due to NIL and the transfer portal, it's older than ever. And I think Kentucky fans really want to get back to the days where players stick around for more than one year. You know, you get to know them more. They play for, you know, the, the big message has been they play for the name on the front of the jersey. And it's a bit on the nose for me, but it's, it's kind of true. I think fans are ready for it. Well, and I think uh, is that we were Scott and I were kind of talking about this in hour one, Tyler, but uh, at least one kid that he should be able to uh, keep. And I know he was recruited by Alabama, but he was at the press conference. I saw him. I, you guys at K- KSR got a uh, you know video and pictures of him. I know it sounds like Travis Perry is definitely locked in with Coach. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was a really cool moment, you know. Mark Pope, to his credit, you know, turned to his SID as Sports Information Director <laughs> just to make sure he could mention Travis ah, Perry. That's but, right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Perry has signed his letter of intent, so he was safe. And, you know, he was there on the floor with everybody, and, you know, Pope pointed him out and asked him to stand up, and he got a huge ovation. And, and then he had, you know, Pope said, I don't think he's going in the portal anytime soon, Pope. So, <laughs> no. Um, and we had heard that he had reached out to Travis Perry pretty much the day after he took the job and said, you know, get your shooting arm ready because you're going to get every opportunity when you come. So, you know, Travis Perry is the all-time leading scorer in Kentucky high school basketball. Uh, he's broken pretty much every record you can. It's it's not fair to compare anybody to Reed Shepard because I think Reed has more NBA type talent, but Travis Perry is another great story. You know, a Kentucky high school legend who will, you know, there's no better example of someone who will represent the state and, you know, play for his hometown school. So it's very cool. And that's, it's nice to have that to build around. Well, the I, fans wanted a updated offense. They wanted a more modern style of oh, play. Yeah. They're going to get it now. <laughs> I don't I mean, get it. Mark Pope will do that. I, I enjoyed watching his BYU yep. teams. And, and one of the coolest things I believe Rick Pitino said was he mentioned John Pelfrey. And it's it's it references back to what Travis Perry is going through where for a Kentucky kid and Reed Shepard as well. And I think Reed will probably go into the NBA. But what if he does stay? I mean, I don't think that's totally off oh, the it table. Would be wild. It would be wild. Yeah. That would be even crazier than the press conference if he came out and said he was staying. <laughs> well, yeah, because he would get the win. He would – Yeah. It would assure I mean, Kentucky yeah, fans. Yeah, have two capable. kids like that where John Pelfrey, who of we've had on this show, who it used to, Rick Patino said he would always ask him, like, you know, why are you so emotional? Like when you put on the jersey, he said, well, coach, you just mm-hmm. you got to understand what it means to somebody from Kentucky to play at the University of Kentucky. And with those two kids, uh, that's what that's what it's all about. Yeah, and I think that's why Sunday was so special, you know. What other place could fill a you know a twenty one thousand no. seat arena for a press conference? And they had to turn away five thousand people at the door. There were still people I out did. there. I saw the videos. I mean, it was nuts. I know. Well, they, they didn't yeah, want I, I, they didn't want Arkansas to outdo them. <laughs> Arkansas didn't outdo them. <laughs> I think there's I think there's a part that it's, part of that that's true. But just the way it all came about, you know, Kentucky playing the, the press conference, and they expected initially five to 8,000 people to come. And they only said they were going to open up certain sections, but if there were more fans, of course, they would continue to open more. Wow. And as the day went on, people started lining up at 8.30 in the morning, and the line just grew and grew and grew. And when I got there about 30 minutes before, I mean, the, the entire lower bowl was full by that point, at three-fourths of the upper bowl. And you're like, you know, by the time this starts at 4.30, is it going to be full? And it was just packed to the brim. I mean, you had people sitting on the seat, standing at the rail. It was probably a fire marshal's nightmare. But it was it was something like I'd never seen. And it just shows you how ready Kentucky fans are for change. And, and the fact that it's coming in the form of a captain of one of the most beloved teams in program history, there's there's nothing better, better than that. You could not have nailed that anymore. And – like you guys said, we'll see what happens when it comes to roster building in the season. But what a start. Yeah, yeah. What, what a start. No, and, and No doubt. And real quick before we let you go, we're talking to Tyler Thompson, editor-in-chief, Kentucky Sports Radio. When will it, Pope going is, to – is he going to start announcing staff soon? I know it's really just been a whirlwind, but when's he going to start kind of putting that together? 
Yeah, he on his first radio show last night, he said he has a couple guys. They're they're trying to finalize the details. Gotcha. We're hearing they they were staff members with him at BYU. One who kind of been with him for a long time, and another who's a younger guy who's more of like an analytics uh, savant. So they're expected to join the staff. Um, there's there's talk that there may be a big name assistant that Kentucky's trying to go after. Mm. Um, to join the staff as well. And if that happens, we should know probably today or tomorrow. And and from there, just filling out the rest of the roles with an ace recruiter because, you know, one thing you didn't have to worry about with Calipari was recruiting. Right. Um, and, and while Mark Pope is, is very convincing and he was kind of restricted at BYU with their honor code in terms of recruiting, I think the, the you know, the administration would like to see a proven recruiter on the staff just to help him out. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, they're, I know he's got the NIL backing, and uh, they're going to give him the yeah. budget to do what he needs to do. Uh, but it's uh, certainly a jolt of energy for Kentucky basketball. Well, we really appreciate it. I know you're very busy, but let everybody know how to follow you and everybody at KSR and uh, to, to continue to follow this, this just unbelievable uh, story of momentum for Kentucky. Yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at Mrs. Tyler KSR. And then you can read all of our awesome work at KentuckySportsRadio.com. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, good stuff. No, that's great. Tyler, yeah. good stuff. Look, I've always said, look, good. Kentucky is not staying down. It's too important to them. I mean, think about it. It didn't take them 24 to 48 hours to, to get over. I know that at first, as she said, they were disturbed. Okay, he hasn't won a game. Right. He's, you know, he's, he was our fourth or fifth choice. But he ends, he's a Kentucky guy. He was a captain of the best team ever. And, and, they, and, they, and, you know, and they get excited about it. And what happens? They fill Rupp Arena for his press conference. I mean, first time, Kentucky. though, since March of 1978, that neither Louisville or Kentucky has a head coach that has a national championship on their resume. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And they got two guys, both of them are full of energy, Mark Pope and Pat Kelsey. Pat First Kelsey time was, since 1942 that neither saw, one of them have a Final Four appearance. I thought I saw on Pat Kelsey's Twitter account he was catching punts in the foot, uh, before the spring game or something, man. Uh, let's All get our energy. final break in. We'll wrap it up wow. next. You're listening to Talkin' Ball on 97.7 ESPN, The Zone. Got a couple of ranks still trying to clear. Bailey Cove and Myra Vista and Franklin and Governors. That one ended up being an injury type. It's got some northbound blockage. A lot of folks scrambling, trying to get in on time this morning. If you're in that group, please be extra careful. Dr. Sandman has the Somnodent, a safe insurance-approved alternative for snoring and sleep apnea. Dr. Randall Sandlin, 350-CARE. Captain Nick in the North Parkway Popeye Skywatch Traffic Center. Specializing in simple and affordable rentals, McCurry Van and Car Rental can make sure you have just the right vehicle for your next family vacation, weekend getaway, or if you just need transportation while your vehicle is being repaired. McCurry carries Ford Transit vans and Mercedes Sprinter vans, trucks and work vans, and more. And they offer discounted rental rates for long-term rentals. Now with four locations, Athens, Muscle Shoals, Coleman, and Huntsville. Log on McCurryRentals.com to make your reservation now. That's McCurryRentals.com. Normally, when you call a roofing company, all you hear is, you need a new roof. Not when you call Fleming Roofing and Restoration. Since 1965, the folks at Fleming have been focused on what you need, whether it's an easy repair or a full roof replacement, commercial or residential. And when it comes to storm damage, you want Fleming on your side. They know all the ins and outs of insurance claims and will guide you through the entire process. Log on FlemingHSV.com and book your free estimate today. Fleming Roofing and Restoration. We show up. It's time for tomorrow's headlines today with Scott Tyson and Drew DeArmond on 97.7 ESPN The Zone. All right, so, boy, this is good. Everybody's following the transfer portal right now, and they're all oh, getting it wrong. Portal Palooza, as they were calling it. They're getting it wrong. Key Uh-oh. Lawrence is not in the portal. Uh-oh. Keyshawn Lawrence is in the portal. Oh, they misspelled Ole the Miss name. Walk-on. Yeah, they're, they're – um, 
our good friend uh, Ross Dellinger is is. I mean, there there's so many guys going in right now that they're thinking they're getting them all right. Lord, that would give me some PTSD not. or something, man. Having to keep up with all these cats that are going into the portal like every five minutes or every two minutes, like ah. Hey, but shout out to a, a guy who's been on the show. Uh, Bobby Meyer did had a great run at Coleman uh, before yeah, our good friend Stu Studeman. Yeah, that yesterday. Stu yeah. Studeman uh, took over and done a great job. But Bobby Meyer, he'd been uh, an assistant at Decatur, but he's back in it, man. He's the head coach of the West Morgan Rebels. So, congrats to Coach Ooh. Meyer he's and got uh, some, that move, uh, man. Area championships, some yeah. elite eights under his belt there at Coleman. Made a great runs. Yeah. Made some great runs with Lawson Schaefer and Seth Suave. As you cover. Ah, uh, <laughs> Seth came back to a couple games. Yeah. This he year. was playing overseas, wasn't he? Hey, yeah, I'm just saying, okay, speaking of Seth Suave, and I'm not going to ruin anything, but keep Thursday at 2 p.m. open. Keep Thursday at 2 p.m. open. Yeah. Well, it's it, going to be an inter- it, it, it We'll fill you in. Maybe later today. Maybe later today we'll fill you in. Yeah, they might but have keep- some sort of official announcement. Yeah, keep Thursday at 2 p.m. open. All we can say is it's the alma mater of Joe Hunk. And you may want to drive over to UAH at that time. Yeah. Not going to say anything more, (laughs) but Thursday at 2 p.m. Yeah. I would expect the announcement for the men's head coach to come out today. Okay. Yes. You're going to give him that hint? (laughs) Just say that. Can't say much more without giving everything away, but I would say – Expect an announcement today. Mm-hmm. There we and go. he's very tall. Uh-oh. <laughs> he's giving hints now. <laughs> anyway, oh, anyway, he's very tall. Doing the interview, I will not be the tallest of the ones. <laughs> and he might can take you down in the post. And he can take me down in the post. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you wanted to visit his family and friends, it's a short drive. <laughs> Oh, uh, we've done everything on the show, and we have, and we've had we've, the son of a, of his high school coach on the show a few times. Yes. Let's put that in. And we've said a few things on the show today. Yeah, we had the dumb button though. <laughs> Bandy was on it. Heck, it's hard not to get fired up when you're talking about a maggot. <laughs> no, we're back at uh, it tomorrow morning.